Hello, my name is Megan Ball. I am the Lead Product Manager at Avanti Destination. And I'm going to show you two ways you can create a quote using our website, avantidestinations.com. On my screen is the homepage of our website. One of the ways that you can create a quote is right here, create a quote using our Pro FIT booking engine, somewhat of an itinerary builder. It defaults to Europe. You can make quotes for Central or South America by selecting the Latin America option, or you can select Asia if you need to make an Asia quote. Today I'm going to make a Europe quote. So you need to set the arrival date in the first city. I am going to set this one for July 25th. My clients are going to go to London. So in the first destination, I will start typing in London, and it goes uh, straight to it. It does a text match. They're going to do three nights in London. Then their second destination, they're going to go to Rome. So again, I can scroll through the pop-up. These are the major destinations in each country we sell in Europe. Or I can start typing Rome. It'll go straight there, and I can select so, three nights. I can add a third destination if I want. I can even click on plus cities and add a fourth, fifth, and sixth destination. London and Rome is fine for now. The default is two adults. I can change this. I can add children if I'd like. I will leave us to adults. Do you need a flight? So this would be for international air from the US to Europe and returning. Yes, they do. And the clients are going to be leaving from New York. Return from Rome. Yes, that's my last destination on this itinerary. So I will click continue. And I'll be in sort of a worksheet section here where I can add any products I want within these different cities. I can do it in any order I want. It's obviously going to start with London. That's the first destination. I can skip to Rome if I want to. I can skip down to the international flights if I want to. But I'm going to start at the very top, at the beginning, with London. So I have arrival of July 25th. That is what I specified in the itinerary builder on the home page. And I need a hotel. So here I can uh, click Add to your, to your quote for handpicked hotels, or there's a green button on the right side where I can click Add as well. I can do this for hotels, transfers, day tours, car rentals, regional highlights, which is a, a short multi-day package based out of London. Um, I can also book transportation to the next destination, whether it's by train or by air. Again, I'm just going to start off with the hotels first, though. So I'll click Add. And I do have an option to customize the arrival date if it needs to be different than July 25th or different than the three nights I specified. It does not. Uh, here, I would say if they want one bed or two beds, one bed is fine. So I'll click Continue. The website will uh, go into our system, find all of the hotel options for London and then order them least expensive to most expensive in my options. Once I have the list here, there's a couple of things I can do for finding out more information if needed. Map Hotels will show you uh, a new box that has a, a map of the city you're in and then a listing on the side of the hotels that we have and where you would find them within the map. You can also, as you're scrolling through, if you see a hotel that might work, but you aren't familiar with it and you'd like a little bit more information than what's already on the screen, then you can click on the name of the hotel. A new box will open showing you pictures, uh, where the hotel is located on the map, you can even move that map around. You can zoom in and out if you want a better feel for where the location is. You can see the hotel services and the amenities. Um, this one is going to work for me. Thistle Bloomsbury Park is showing available 
for 885, that works for my clients, I will select this hotel. So now I have the three nights of the hotel. I also have, as part of a city package in London, a guidebook and the Oyster card, which is a transportation card for the city subways and buses. So that's all good. I would like to add a city tour, though. So here under Tours, I'm going to click Add. The default is for the day after arrival, which is perfect. I'll click Continue and wait for a list of all of the day tours in London to appear. See if there's something that might work for my clients. So I'll scroll through until I see something that would maybe work. There's a lot of options in, in London. Um, Royal London Bike Tour, that sounds interesting. If I want more information on exactly what that means, I can click the name of the tour. And here I have pictures, uh, a description of the tour, and even a video from the local operator of what will happen on this tour. This sounds like fun. I think my clients would like this. So I'll go ahead and select. And now that option is in my itinerary. So that's good. I can move on to the next city. Um, but before I add rail to the next city, I've just noticed my next option here is Rome. I forgot that my clients also wanted to go to Paris. Uh, they actually want to do London, Paris, Rome. That's not a problem. I don't need to start over. I can just click on Add City and insert a city into the itinerary. So I'll go ahead and click Add City. It's going to ask me what, what the city is. So I'm going to type Paris. I'm going to say how long, three nights. And I want to add it. So I'll click Add City again. The website is going to take a minute. It will refresh the itinerary going to insert Paris in um, into the itinerary after London before Rome, and then adjust the arrival date in Rome accordingly. So I still have all of the London um, products that I already selected. But now I have Paris in here for July 28, three nights. That's correct, based off London being the 25th for three nights. And then I still have Rome in here. Now the arrival date is July 31st, which makes sense if Paris is the 28th for three nights. Excellent. So now I can add rail to the next city. They're going to do rail from London to Paris, city center to city center. That's going to be much faster than flying. So defaults to having the date in here of July 28th, that is correct. Defaults to a departure time of 9 a.m., that's fine. I'll just click continue and see what kind of uh, rail schedules are available for that date starting at 9 a.m. and make a choice off that. So I have a couple of options here. I see a train at 8.30, there's one at 9.24, and then again at 10.24. Uh, this one is stopping in Lille. Uh, I don't want my clients to do, do that, so I'm going to skip down to the next direct train, which is at 12.24. The prices are different for each one. I think really the one that's going to work best for them would be one of these two options. This 9.24 departure is a lower price, so I'm going to select that one for first class. And click Select. Now when you're booking rail or air, uh, on the website, you will often see this error message here. It's not, a, it's not an error message. It's just advising you that the product you're selecting has variable pricing, and it could change up until the time that it's ticketed. So I acknowledge that by clicking OK. And now I have my rail from London to Paris, July 28, in the itinerary, which is perfect. Now I can move on to Paris and add everything I need there. I need a hotel, of course, so I'm going to click Add next to Handpicked Hotel. It has the arrival date of July 28, which is correct, for three nights. So I'll click Continue and wait for the list of Paris hotels to appear. So 
So same thing, I can map the hotels if I want to see all the different options, what, what might be there in Paris. Um, but that's okay, I'm, I'm just going to scroll through and see what is appearing, what the pricing is looking like, and availability. So this hotel is a three-star that would go with the three-star hotel that I selected for London. And um, it's showing available. If I'd like to see some more information, again, I can click the name of the hotel, see pictures, and uh, map. This will work for my clients, so I'll go ahead and click Select. I have here, just like in London, uh, our Paris City package, which is a guidebook, and a visit pass, which is for the subways and city buses in Paris. But again, I'd like them to do a city tour. It's their first time to Paris. So I'll go ahead and uh, click Add next to Tours. And then um, the default date is the 29th. That works fine. I'll go ahead and click Continue and see a list of day tours that I can choose from. When you see a message here of minimum number of passengers um, not met or tour not operating, that's, it, it's exactly what it's saying. Perhaps this tour requires four people and I only have two. More likely is going to be the operational. I can click on the tour and see that it departs Tuesday through Saturday. So if it doesn't go on Sunday or Monday, that means the date that I have selected is a Sunday or a Monday and that's why it's not pricing for me. I'm going to scroll through until I find something. I'm just looking for a standard city tour. This one sounds interesting, though. It's a city tour and a cruise. That one's going to work for my clients, so I will click Select. Now I have the hotel and I have the tour. So I can move on to our next city, which is Rome. I still have the option of doing train or air, but I know Paris to Rome is quite a distance. Uh, in this case, it probably will be quicker to fly. So I'm going to click on Add next to the Flight to Next City. Again, you can change the dates or the uh, departure time if you'd like to. This is fine, though. I'm going to click Continue and see what the flight schedules are for that day. So it's going to order them as the least expensive to most. Uh, but the least expensive is a 6.20 a.m. departure from Paris. That is very early. Um, my clients on their vacation, they do not want that. So I'm going to keep going through and see what other options there are. There's a 2.15 departure. That's better. Um, here's a 1.05, arriving Rome, 3.10. That works. It's 4.01. So you can use this just to compare the different options, decide which will work best for your clients. I'm going to go with this. Uh, 105 departure from Charles de Gaulle Airport. Click Select. Again, I have the advisement that uh, that the price, because it's airfare, the prices are subject to change on air until ticketed. That's all this message is for. I'll click OK, because I understand that. Uh, so now I have the flight to Rome on the 31st. And now I can add my Rome services. So I have July 31st, three nights Rome. Perfect. I need to add a hotel for them. I'll click Add. Again, the 31st for three nights, one bed, all good. Continue. Okay, so my first option here, uh, this property is showing that the rooms are on request. Uh, you can still book the on request rooms, that's fine. I'm going to keep scrolling though and see if there's something that's around the same price that is showing available, which there is. The uh, Hotel Veneto Palace uh, is showing available for 530 That's a fantastic price. If I want to see a little bit more info, click the name of the hotel. I can see some nice pictures. This looks like a really good option for my clients. I'm going to book this one. So I will select here this select room, select. So now the city package in Rome comes with a semi-private panoramic tour of Rome. So that's great. I'm not going to add another tour at this time. Uh, I'll discuss with my clients and see if there's any other tours that they want to add uh, later 
before or even after a deposit has been put down. I do need the air though, so I, I need to add that air for them. So I'll go ahead and click Add. It remembers my departure that I selected, which was New York. It sets the departure date from New York as July 24, the day before arrival in London. That makes sense. And now if Rome is July 31 for three nights, then August 3rd would be the correct departure, and the return from Rome is correct. Defaults here will be economy for the cabin uh, class. You can select uh, another cabin though if you'd like. Um, you can select a specific airline if your clients have a preference. Um, it will default to any. And then also there's best routing slash price. The default is to sort by the best price, but you can select best routing if you want only non-stops to appear, for example. I'm going to search by price and just see what the options are and, and then compare them to pick what will work best for my clients. Okay, so I have a bunch of schedules here that I can compare the flight, uh, the flight times to. What I want to point out is under the total fare column, this looks different than when we added the air from Paris to Rome. When we were adding that flight within Europe, we're only looking at published airfare. So we can post the price, we can display it. The air from the US to Europe and return, the, those international fares, they are special contracted tour fares where we cannot display the exact price per person because it has to be part of a complete itinerary, a complete land package as well. So whatever the least expensive is, it will say this is the lowest price. And as you scroll through, if there are itineraries that are more expensive, then it will say how much more it is. So it looks like all of these itineraries here, they all cost the same, until this itinerary here is an additional $8 from the whatever the least expensive price is. Once you select an itinerary and it's added to the, the rest of the land services, you'll see a new gross total and you can kind of discern from there the price of the air. So I'm going to go back up to the top, see what kind of flights I had here. Um, this first one is, look, this is a day flight into London. That's not going to work for my clients. But this one will, um, leaving 9.30 at night, arriving London 9.40, and then rolling back to New York, JFK at 12.30, so I've got two nonstop flights. That's great. I'm going to select this option. So I still have all the products I selected for each city. Now I have the international air as well. Now that I've added the air, I'm thinking I should add airport transfers. So I can easily go back up here to my London uh, section, and I can add a transfer, an arrival transfer from the airport to the hotel. So this flight was arriving in Heathrow. I'm going to look for transfers from Heathrow Airport. These are a sheer transfer. Uh, I'm going to do the private transfer for them. Heathrow Airport to London Hotel. That's what they need, so I'll select that. And then in Rome, um, I need to do a transfer for their return flight. Um, I'm going to leave them off for the, the city the city to city uh, flight from Paris to Rome. We're going to discuss more about the itinerary, but they're definitely going to need the transfer in Rome back out to the airport when they fly home. I'm going to add that for now. The default is the arrival date in Rome, but I need this for their departure. So I will change the date to August 3rd and then I'll click continue. And I'm looking for private transfer Rome Hotel to the airport, select. And now that's in here for August 3rd, which is their departure date. 
All right, now I'm ready to continue. I want to turn this into a quote. I can click to continue and add passengers. You'll see that you, if you have not selected in the trip insurance accept or decline, it will give you a message saying that you need to do one or the other. Um, let's decline for now. Click to continue. It will say must be logged in to continue to check out. So this is just to show you that you can use our website to do some research and to do shopping without needing a login for the site. If you want to create a quote and uh, go through with the booking process, you do need to have a login. So I'll go ahead and click login. Um, now I'm logged in, it has my agency name, so it says test account, that's the agency I use for these test bookings on the website. And it has my name here, and still has everything in here that I had booked. And now I'm gonna click Click to continue and add passengers. And this is our on our finalized page. So I have a section here where I can do special requests. Maybe these clients are on their honeymoon. So I'm going to add honeymoon. Um, I have insurance to clients. Uh, I'm rethinking that. They probably should add trip insurance. At least I'll put it on the quote to show them what a, a total price would be. So I will change that now. Uh, if I have trip insurance, you do have to state the, the state that the clients reside in. In this case, it's Washington. You can add a travel agent fee if you'd like. Uh, you can add up to 15% of the gross total. It will tell you what that amount is. So I could add up to $883.11. I'm just going to add $150. Now I see this in here, travel agent fee 150. So I need to put the names in. You'll notice there are red stars next to first and last name, date of birth, and gender. Date of birth and gender are required if your booking has air or rail in it because those two modes of transportation require that information of us, so we need it for the passengers. So I'm going to go ahead and Put in their information. Once I've added that information here, I'll continue scrolling. Under shipping and billing information, this will just default to having the agency information based on your login. Your options are to pay a deposit, or you can hold the reservation. I'm going to do please hold the reservation for me. Uh, by clicking that, now it will, it will create the quote in our system, and it will hold it for 10 business days. Lastly is, of course, the disclaimer. Uh, about reading terms and conditions. I'm going to go ahead and check the box and click finalize. So it says please wait, loading. It's taking all of the information, all the products I selected and the information I just uh, input and it's creating a quote in our system. So now it's saying uh, thank you for choosing Avanti and that we have a quote number here. You can see the information below, everything that we booked. From the screen, you can email yourself a copy of the invoice. Uh, if your clients, once they see the itinerary, they decide, this is great, but I'd like a different hotel in Paris. You can use the edit booking tool and change the hotel in Paris. You can edit your booking uh, as long as there's no money on it when it's still in a quote stage. We also have a brand new function called Upload Files. 
This is a way for you to send information uh, directly to our booking system that pertains to this specific reservation. Uh, an example would be if you book a, a product that requires a scanned copy of the passenger's passport, then instead of emailing it to us or faxing it to us, you can use this new feature to upload the file. The way it works is you click Upload Files. In the Upload Docs window, you'll have the booking number already in here. You can choose to file. Once you've selected the file you want to upload, you click Upload File, and it will tell you that it's been successfully uploaded. You'll see a list down here of that file. So really easy to use. Uh, basically, any time that you would have something that you would typically fax us or send as an attachment in an email, you'll use this. Uh, you can now use this function to, to do instead. It really is for things like specialty forms that we need you to fill out uh, or scan copies of passport. It should not be used for providing credit card information or um, asking for itinerary revisions. Something else that you can do here is uh, add cell phone numbers. Uh, cell phone numbers are really great to have for our suppliers in case there's a very specific reason they need to contact the clients during travel in the destination. Um, good reason would be if uh, the driver is wanting to touch base with the clients um, for their airport arrival transfer. They want to make sure that they arrived on time, just check in. Uh, say, tell them maybe I'm standing exactly in this spot. The driver can use the information provided here and call the client's cell phone number to connect. It's really easy in this box. You'll just type in the cell phone number and then click update phone number. And that information is there. The information will only appear in our system. Um, and on the supplier side and will only be used for very specific reasons when it's necessary for the supplier to contact the clients during travel in the destination. Otherwise, it will not be utilized. So there we have it. That's a really easy way to create a custom itinerary uh, for your clients and some other features that you can use to communicate with us or add information um, through the website as opposed to calling reservations. Uh, I'm going to show you another way that you could make a, a, a quote on our website. Um, maybe you've seen one of our vacation packages. These are kind of like suggested itineraries. You can look through them, you can scroll through, or you can choose a destination. Say your clients, they, they know they're going to England. You want to see some of our suggested itineraries here. Um, we have British classics, London, York, and Edinburgh. That looks really interesting. Day-by-day -day itinerary will show you exactly that. It shows you all the inclusions and a little recap of what will happen each day um, on this suggested itinerary. So I can see here this is three nights London, one night York, two nights Edinburgh. That's great. That's actually where my clients want to go. They just want to adjust it. They want to stay longer in York and longer in Edinburgh. That's fine. We can actually go ahead, click on details and quote, we can use this as a starter package and then modify it through the process as opposed to going through the, the Pro FIT tool on the home page and building it out one by one. That's really easy to do. Or taking a pre-existing itinerary that the city's already fit and you just want to modify it, that's easy to do as well. So the default here is for the start date of a month from now. Um, my clients are actually going in September, so I'm going to pick their arrival date in September that they're traveling, which is the 12th. And then I'm going to click on Review or Modify. So it's going to take this starter package with the info that we use um, as the default, the default hotel and the default tour, default train times um, from city to city. It's going to grab all of that. And it might take a minute or two because it's going to apply the new arrival date. And then it'll give me that worksheet that we started when we made our last quote. But it'll already be filled in for me. And then I just need to modify things here and there of the, the parts that I want to change for my clients.
Once it's finished taking my itinerary, I'll be able to click on the names of the hotels if I want to see some more information on them. Uh, if I'm not sure, I'm not familiar with one of them, I can take a look and see is this going to work for my clients. And then I can also delete that hotel and, and shop for a different one if I uh, need something else, if there's perhaps a different location that the clients are looking for. So I can see my starter, you can tell already, it's already filled in with a lot of information. Uh, it looks really similar to the last one that we were building item by item. A lot of these items are already in here for me. So September 12th is the arrival, Three Nights London. I can check on this hotel. Uh, oh, that's great. That's exactly where my clients want to be located in London. So I'm going to leave this hotel in there. Um, I'm fine with this London sightseeing tour. Um, I'm not sure if they want that one. I think I'm actually going to remove that and pick a different tour. So I'm going to go ahead and click Delete next to that tour. And then I'll click Add and shop for a different one. So I'm going to go through here. And I know they wanted to go do the Harry Potter one day. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this tour. I'm going to put the, this tour in their quote instead. The rail is in here. Again, we use defaults uh, just for these starter packages. And the specific train that is selected doesn't run every single day. So that's why in this case it's saying unavailable. This specific train number and train times don't run on the date that I'm requesting. That's fine. I will remove it by clicking delete. And then I will click add. Rail to Next City, add to quote, and I'll look for a different train that will work for my clients that day. So I see a lot of times here, a lot of different prices. It's not the least expensive price. And 9.30, arriving 11.32, that will work just fine for them. So I'm going to select that option. Click Select. So I have all my London stuff. I have my train to York. Now I have York for the 15th for one night. They don't want one night. Also, this hotel isn't available. That's fine. I'm going to delete the hotel because I know they don't want um, one night there anyway. I'm going to change it to two nights. So I still have September 15th uh, as the arrival in York, but instead of one night, I'm going to change it to two nights. As soon as I pick the new, the new uh, duration, the website is going to take a moment and refresh. It's going to modify the rest of the itinerary as needed based on changing the duration in York from one night to two nights. So all my London stuff is still there. I still see my train to York. Now I have the 15th as the arrival date still, but two nights York. That's great. So now I'm going to click on Add Hotel, and I'm going to search for uh, a hotel in New York that will work for my clients. So there's a four-star hotel on request. I could go with that one. There's a five-star hotel it's showing available. It's a little bit more, but for this two nights right there in the middle, they haven't been to New York before. I want to do something really special. So I'm going to go with the five-star hotel for this case. We'll go ahead and click Select. Uh, now, I've booked afresh the York Hotel Nights, and it did it as a city package, including the hop-on, hop-off tour. So now I have them in here twice. I, I don't need them twice, so I'll delete the one that was in from the starter package and just leave it in here as the one 24-hour ticket for the hop-on, hop-off, and I'm good with that. Um, so again, the train. The train is, uh, is saying unavailable because it was using the, the original uh, travel date based on the starter package. That's not what we're doing anymore. So I'm going to delete it and shop for the rail new.
Okay, so now I see York to Edinburgh, a lot of different times here with different prices. So for first class, I'm seeing 135 and 168. So I'm going to stay in the 135 and look at the different times. There's a 1037 arriving 108. There's also a 1001 arriving 1230. Um, you know, either one works. I'm going to go with this later one. That one works for me. So I'll, I'll pick the first class and click select. So now I have two nights Edinburgh on the 17th. That's great. They actually, though, they wanted three nights. They're okay with the 10 Hill Place. That's going to work uh, for my clients in this. But I want it to be for three nights instead of two nights. So I'm just going to change in this drop down to three and wait while the website refreshes the itinerary and makes that adjustment based on the new duration. So now in Edinburgh, I still have 10 Hill Place Hotel. You can see it's for three nights in here. And I have the hop on, hop off. That's fine. I think I want to add something else for them, though. So I'm going to add another tour uh, for the 18th. Uh, let's make, actually make it on the 19th. So I change for the different date that I want the tour to be before clicking Continue. And let's see. The afternoon tea and entrance to the castle, Edinburgh Castle. That sounds really, really cool. I'm going to go with that one. Um, 11, that's a little early. Let's do 2 o'clock. At Edinburgh, I have afternoon tea on the 19th. Uh, I could still add air here if I wanted to. I, I um, you know, we haven't talked about air because this was just a starter package. Um, they're fine with land only. I think they're going to use their miles maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure. They haven't decided yet. So I'll leave that off and just do the land only since we're not sure uh, exactly on the package if they do want to add air or make some other modifications. I'm going to decline the insurance. And I'm ready to book. I'm already logged in, uh, so I don't need to log in again. I just need to click to continue and add passengers. Nothing special to say this time, so I'll leave the special request box blank. Uh, standard shipping is fine. I don't need express handling on this booking. They're not leaving until September. We're going to decline the insurance for now. Uh, I'm going to leave off a TAC. I'll just um, go in and uh, add the names. Because I have rail, again, I do need to add uh, data first. Again, my information is here based on my login. And I'm just going to do the courtesy hold for right now, make sure that I've, ex I've read the terms and conditions, and then finalize. Now I have my quote number. So that was really easy. I could use the starter package from vacation packages uh, because the, the framework of the itinerary was what my clients wanted, uh, and then I was just able to modify things here and there. I could modify the duration within each city. Uh, I could swap out the hotels or swap out the day tours very easily. So I hope that this tutorial helps you uh, understand the two quick ways to make quotes on our website. And have a great day.